In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. <clears throat> so before I begin, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Father Thomas Duncan. Um, I was ordained back in 2014 in the United States, and I've spent my nine years as a priest there in the United States. And so it's a very um, different place. I, I was stationed my first year in Minnesota, where it is very cold, very cold. And then after a year there, I went to Idaho, where again, oddly enough, it was very cold, where I took care of a series of missions in Montana, where once again, it was very cold. Um, then after that, I went to California, where it is not cold. It was actually quite pleasant, the, the weather at least. And there in California, I served for three years, helping with the, preaching the retreats in uh, Los Gatos, California after which time I went to Missouri and I spent one year there. And now I have had the opportunity to be here in the Asian district. I'm very happy to be here. It was funny though, we had a, a, one of the priests from the Asian district, he's no longer here, but he, um, he came to a retreat in Los Gatos while I was there during the summer, very hot and hu for us very humid. And he um, came to the, to the door, he knocked on my door. He says, excuse me, uh, Father, can you help me out? I said what's up? He said, well, I'm freezing. I said, you're, you're freezing? It's the middle of the summer. Why are you freezing? He said, well, I, I was just wondering, do you have a jacket? I said, but it's hot. He said, yes, but it's not humid. And he was so used to the humidity, which obviously, coming out here, I was not quite ready for that. Um, so please do keep me in your prayers uh, that, I, that I get acclimated to it. It's happening fairly, fairly quickly. But I, I walk outside and I start pouring out sweat, of course. So please keep me in your prayers. I'm very happy to be here. And of course, I'm very happy to, to have the honor to come down and help Father Summers here in Singapore. <clears throat> but today, in particular, on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost, I wanted to, to give an allegory, to, to tell a story about a cat. His cat's name was Buttons. Buttons the cat. And Buttons was tired of being owned. He wanted to be his own his own man, his own cat. So having been in a firehouse there, take, being taken care of by a bunch of firemen, he finally got up the nerve to leave one day and to, to disappear, to go off and do his own thing. <clears throat> and after a couple of hours, he grew tired, so he went over and found this nice tree and laid down next to the tree and went to sleep. And while he was asleep, a naughty little boy came over with a rock and threw it at him and wounded poor Buttons to death. He was dying and crying out for, for consolation from someone and just making all kinds of a noise. And another cat came by and, and said, Buttons, what, what, what's your problem? And he says, well, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm so afraid. Now in the United States, I don't know if it's the same here, but in the United States, we have the custom to say that cats have nine lives. He, and so the other cat told him, you know, Buttons, it's not that big of a deal. Just die already, and you'll come back to life, and everything will be fine. And Button says, well, I, I can't remember. He said, you can't remember? What, what do you mean you can't remember? He said, well, I know that when I was a kitten, a little, a little kitten, a nice old lady used to own me, and she tied a nice little bow around my neck, and a dog made fun of me, so I, I went and sassed back at him, and he bit me, and I died. And then I know that I was, I was helping on a, on a ship. I was taking care of the, the mice problem on this one ship, and well, the ship sunk, and I died. And then I was, you know, I, I was back on, on, on the firm ground, and <clears throat> I saw a trap, and I knew it was a trap, but as the, proverb, the proverb says, you know, uh, curiosity killed the cat, I couldn't figure out how to work it. And, well, I went over to the trap, and I died. And now I can't remember, is this my eighth life or my ninth life? Which is somewhat of a predicament for this poor cat. <clears throat> but it is something that very often we ourselves take for granted. We think that we're always going to resurrect. Very much like today's gospel, we have this young man that our Lord takes pity on, and of course, he brings him back to life. For the good of his mother, of course. And as I say, we we tend to think that we're very much the same case. Now, not physically, right? We don't go off and, I don't know, jump off a cliff or something and expect to, to rise from the dead. Not immediately, at least, and most definitely not in glory. But 
we do this with the confessional. We go to the confessional and we have this mentality that, oh, you know what, it's okay. I'll, I'll sin again and I'll just go to confession on Sunday. Or I'll go back, go back to confession sometime later this week. Everything will be fine. No worries. Which is not correct at all. Which is not correct at all. St. Alphonsus of Liguri, actually in his book, The Preparation for Death, talks about the fact that <clears throat> when it comes to the confessional, God will only forgive us a finite number of sins. And none of us knows how many of those are. None of us does. He said that for some, they might commit thousands of mortal sins and still have the possibility of saving their soul and going to confession right before they die. And for others, they can commit but one mortal sin and lose their soul forever. We never know how many different mortal sins God is going to allow us to confess. And therefore, we should not take it for granted that it's going to happen. Now, immediately, we should be you know, jumping forward and saying, Father, that's, that's impossible. You're limiting the power of God, which it does sound like we're doing that. God's mercy is infinite, and therefore, God wants to forgive infinitely. <clears throat> he is always willing to forgive, so long as we're truly sorry. But the problem is, is that God is not limited at all. He is limited only by our own being. He is limited by the very fact of our lack of dispositions. If we are not truly sorry for something, if we are not willing to take the means to remove ourselves from the occasion of sin in the future, if we just have the intention of falling back into the same sin, God can't forgive us. Not because he's not infinitely merciful, but precisely because he is, he is infinitely just. And if we're not sorry for our sins, then there's nothing he can do. On the other side of that, on the other side of that, we have to also recognize that our own lives, being limited as they are, not being omnipresent like God, we can't be committing sins and be in the confessional at the same moment. Therefore, there's going to be some limitations as to how many times I can go to confession and when I'm going to die. When I'm going to die. Because I will die at some point, and all of my actions themselves, therefore, are limited. Even though, theoretically, I could do an infinite number of different actions. My actions are still limited by the length of my life. And so, the, many, the times that God can forgive my sins is limited by the length of my life. This is something that we have to take into consideration. <clears throat> and in turn, this should bring about certain resolutions on our part. The first thing is that we have to constantly remind ourselves that this could be our last moment. We have to live every day of our life as though we will never have the opportunity to return to the confessional, as though we will never have the opportunity to ask for forgiveness again. And if we do that, we won't fall into sin. If we live our entire life as though we will never have the possibility of going back to the confessional, we will make sure that we don't fall into grave sin. At the same point, at those opportunities that we do have to return to the confessional, we should make them count. Not just constantly depending upon the confessional to bring us back into the grace of God, but to use the confessional in the, very much the same way that we receive Holy Communion, as a growth of spiritual life, as a growth in the spiritual life itself, and in the life of grace within our own hearts. We have to go to the confessional, not just because we're in the state of sin, but also because we want to love God more. The confessional is not supposed to be a scary place where all we do is get punished. The confessional is supposed to be another home where we can beg for God to help us to do penance for the sins that we have committed. It is a sign of God's love for us. And it can't, it must not be misused. But how often is it? <clears throat> when we talk about this question of being truly, truly sorry for our sins, there are certain things that go together with that, these dispositions. 
part of that is the firm purpose of amendment. If our intention is to go right back into the sin that we've been committing, then we most definitely don't have that. But if, on the other hand, of course, we, we take the means that are necessary, we try our hardest, and through weakness we fall again, well, of course, we're human. We can make mistakes. It's not fail-proof. But we have to keep trying to make the efforts that are necessary. We can't just give up. We can't. Look at our daily lives. <clears throat> in today's day and time, especially in, to, in today's world, we are surrounded by so many different safety mechanisms, right? If you go into America, the, the electrical plugs have <clears throat> little covers so that babies can't stick their fingers inside, lest they, of course, electrocute themselves. That'd be horrible. But how many different things do we do in our daily life to make sure that we are safe? We, we, we wear our... our uh, our seat belts when we're riding in a car. We do what is necessary. We, all of our cars have so many different bells and whistles to let us know that there's somebody behind us or somebody in front of us or to the side of us or whatever. We have so many different safety mechanisms in our lives today to keep ourselves safe. And yet, what do we do for our souls? What different safety mechanisms do we put into place to make sure that I don't fall into grave sin. There are very few. There are very few that we do. And this is what we mean by the firm purpose of amendment. But connected to this firm purpose is to listen to the advice of the priest in the confessional and be willing to do what the priest asks. Now, there may be times when the priest doesn't fully understand your situation or whatever else it might be. In which case, of course, talk to the priest. Make it more clear for him so that he can give an advice which is fitting. But at the same time, if the priest has understood well, well, at that point, we no longer have a reason to keep ourselves from doing what the priest asks. It may be inconvenient. It may be completely uncomfortable. <clears throat> that doesn't matter. Inconvenience versus eternal damnation, there's a big difference there. We should never allow an inconvenience to keep us from fulfilling that which we were demanded in the confessional. So let us, of course, turn to our Lord, and especially on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost, let us be reminded of the fact that we are mortal. We will find a day at which we will die, and we will have to render an account of our entire life to God. And how do we want to enter into this, this judgment seat? Do we want to walk in afraid because we didn't know it was coming yet? We didn't know if this was our eighth life or our ninth life? Or do we want to be the person who was prepared, who has lived their life, their, their life well all the way through so that they have nothing to be afraid of? Let us go to our Lord and ask him for those graces to persevere in making good confessions, in making those confessions grow within us so that we might grow in the grace that is necessary to persevere here on earth and be found worthy of going straight to heaven, if at all possible. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.